President of the Republic of Kenya, particulars of the allegations. Your Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, please take the stand. Your Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, the grounds for your proposed removal from office by impeachment as received by the Senate from the National Assembly are as follows. But A, gross violation of the Constitution or any other law pursuant to Article 51B1 of the Constitution. Ground one, violation gross violation of Articles 10, 2A, B, and C, 27, 4, 73, 1A, and 2B, 75, 1C, and 129, 2 of the Constitution, and Articles 147, 1, as read with Article 131, 2C, and D of the Constitution. The preamble of the Constitution provides, among other things, that the people of Kenya adopted and enacted it, A, being proud of the ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity, and a determination to live in peace and unity as one indivisible sovereign nation, and B, recognizing the aspirations of all Kenyans for a government based on the essential values of human rights, equality, freedom, democracy, social justice, and the rule of law. The preamble of the Constitution is supplemented by Article 10, 2A, B, and C of the Constitution, which establishes the core national values and principles of governance that bind all state officers, including the Deputy President. These values and principles include patriotism, human dignity, national unity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, non-discrimination, equality, human rights, protection of the marginalized, democracy, and good governance. Moreover, Articles 73, 1A, and 2B of the Constitution establish responsibilities of leadership. They provide that the authority assigned to a state officer, such as the deputy president, is a public trust to be exercised in a manner that is consistent with the purpose and objects of the Constitution, demonstrates respect for the people, brings honor to the nation and dignity to the office, and promotes public confidence in the integrity of the office. Also, Article 27.4 of the Constitution prohibits all forms of discrimination, including discrimination based on ethnic or social origin, conscience, belief, language, and birth. Further, Article 73 2B of the Constitution provides that decision-making should be objective and impartial and should not be influenced by favoritism and improper motives. Furthermore, Article 75 1C of the Constitution provides that a state officer should behave, whether in public and official life, in private life, or in association with other persons, in a manner that avoids demeaning the office he holds. Therefore, as a matter of constitutional compliance, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, who is the principal assistant to the President of the Republic, is required, A, to promote the constitutional core values such as peace and unity of all Kenyans in the context of ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity, patriotism, national unity, rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, equality, human rights, non-discrimination, and protection of the marginalized and good governance. B, to respect and uphold representation of Kenya's multi-ethnic and culturally diverse society through the promotion of equality and affording equal opportunities to all Kenyans in appointments to the public service and allocation of public resources and C, to make, promote, and implement public policy decisions that
that do not discriminate against any Kenyan based on conscience, ethnic or social origin, language or birth. However, on diverse dates throughout the last two years, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has persistently made utterances threatening to discriminate, exclude, and unlawfully deny sections of the people of Kenya and regions of the Republic of Kenya equal opportunities for public service appointments and allocation of public resources. Besides, the utterances are highly inflammatory and insightful and significantly undermine national unity and the peaceful coexistence of Kenya's diverse communities. To illustrate, A, sometime in 2023, at a public forum in Kajiado County within the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made highly inflammatory and insightful public pronouncements to the effect that the government of Kenya is a company and that the allocation of government development projects and public sector jobs are based on shares determined by how the populace of the various ethnic communities voted in the 2022 general election. Specifically, he stated as follows, quote, a government is like a company. There is shareholding. Kunawale who have invested a lot of shares, Kunawale wameweka kidogo. Kunawale wamekata. Lakini wote ni wa Kenya. So ndio tukasema kama wewe umeenda kupanda mahindi ama wacha nipeane example ya ngombe kwa sababu niko Kajiado. Wewe uko na ngombe yako ya maziwa. Hiyo ngombe imezaliwa ikiwa njao. Umeichunga vizuri. Umepatia majani. Umenunulia daily meal. Umepatia chumvi. Umepeleka kwa malisho. Umepatia maji. Imeza. Imeanza kukamuliwa. Wewe unatakiwa kwanza ukue mtu ya kwanza kukamua hiyo ngombe na kunywa maziwa. End of quote. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa emphasized the divisive and insightful narrative embodied in the above utterances as follows. Quote, Haiwezikani mtu ambaye alikuwa anakupigia kelele ukichunga hii ngombe na kusema hii ngombe ni ile ya kienyeji hakuna haja ya, kushuguliki, ya kushugulika nae. Hii ngombe ni bure, haiwezi kutoa maziwa. Hii ngombe ata ikipona jicho moja wachana nayo unapoteza wakati. Saile ngombe imezaa, imetoa maziwa, amekuja na kikombe, amekuja na sufuria, anataka atolewe maziwa. Mimi nikasema hiyo haiwezekani. Nikasema yule mwenye hii ngombe na kuichunga na kuitunza kwanza akamue maziwa. Yeye na watoto wake wakunywe. Ile itabaki aitie majirani. Hata yule alikuwa anapiga kelele akisema hii ngombe ni bure na haiwezekani kama kunayo imebaki pia apewe kama hakuna imebaki atembee si namna hiyo end of quote His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa made similar remarks at another public forum as follows quote a government is like a company i did not say it is a company I said it is like a company. In every company, there are shares, preferential shares and ordinary shares. When there is an AGM, non-shareholders do not vote or attend the AGM. When there are dividends to be divided, they are divided according to the number of shares. That is the truth. End of quote. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa continued the insightful and divisive utterances at yet another forum where he stated as follows, quote, Silazima tungeangalia nyinyi, sisi lazima tungeangalia nyinyi. Hii serikali ni kampuni na ni ya shares. Sindio? Ni ya shares. Kuna wenye kampuni, wale wako na shares mingi, wale wako na chache. 
kuna wale hawana sasa nyinyi muli invest kwa hii kampuni ya William Ruto na Rigathi Gashagwa sasa lazima mvune yule ambaye alipanda atafanya nini simulipanda simuliamka mapema end of quote at another forum in Nandi County His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa continued the same divisive and insightful narrative as follows Quote Raisa ako pale niko hapo Raisa ako pale niko hapo Huyu Felix ako hapo Mimi mnanijua msimamo wangu ya kwamba watoto wakiwa wengi kuna wale kwanza ya kuangaliwa si mnajua sasa huyu Felix ako pale ndiye kuunganisha mawaya mambo yenu tumepanga mambo iko sawa chakula iko jikoni karibu kuiva watoto ni wengi chakula ni kidogo iko watoto ya nyumbani iko wa jirani iko namna hiyo na nyinyi mtulie chakula ikiiva sisi ndio wenye kupakua na watoto tunawajua kwa sura na kwa msimamo hatuwezi kuwa confused kuna mtu hajui watoto wake na wiki inakuja tutatangaza hatua kali ile tutachukua na ile maneno tumepanga end of quote in addition in september 2024 during a public rally in nairobi His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa made public utterances that incited other communities against the ethnic communities that live around the Mount Kenya region by stating as follows quote na mimi mkaniambia nimsaidie rais kwa kazi lakini nikiwa hapo kwa serikali nikue pia nikichunga mambo ya watu wa mlima niendelee kuchunga mambo ya mlima ama nisichunge sasa hiyo kuchunga mambo ya mlima inaniletea matatizo. Ati naambiwa mimi ni mkabila. Mimi ni mkabila kweli. Nikichunga mambo ya watu wa mlima iko makosa. Iko makosa. End of quote. His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa's utterances throughout the past two years undermined the promotion of national unity in the context of Kenyan society's multi-ethnic demography. Cloud just pause for a bit. Honorable senators, just put your phones on silence. Please. Proceed, clerk. A bit. His excellencies, his excellency regarding Gashagwa's utterances throughout the past two years undermine the promotion of national unity in the context of Kenyan society's multi-ethnic demography and multicultural diversity. In addition, they have the potential to alienate, isolate, and create disharmony among the various ethnic communities of Kenya. In summary, His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa's above-mentioned utterances over the last two years are impeachable offenses to the extent that they grossly violate articles 10 2 a b and c 27 4 73 1a and 2b 75 1c and 129 2 of the constitution and article 147 1 as read with article 131 2c and d of the constitution specifically His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa's divisive and insightful public utterances over the last two years a are incompatible with the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya b can stir ethnic hatred and, prom and promote ethnic balkanization of the Republic of Kenya c falsely alluded to an unexistent government policy to discriminate and marginalize the populace of the regions and tribes that did not vote for the current administration in the 2022 general elections your excellency rigathi gashagwa how do you plead to ground one guilty or not guilty not guilty ground two 
gross violation of Articles 147.1 and 152.1 of the Constitution. Article 147.1 of the Constitution provides that the Deputy President shall be the principal assistant of the President and shall deputize for the President in the execution of the President's functions. In addition, Article 152.1 of the Constitution states that the Deputy President is a member of the Cabinet. On various dates throughout the last two years, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa undermined the President and the Cabinet and the effective discharge of the national government's executive mandate by making unilateral public statements that were inconsistent with policy positions collectively adopted by the government. To illustrate, A, on or around 30th April 2024, the cabinet passed a resolution for the evacuation of people residing along the Nairobi River. B, shortly after that, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made a public statement opposing the Nairobi River riparian evacuation orders, which the cabinet had sanctioned for public safety and climate change mitigation. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made contradictory public statements despite being a member of the cabinet and being assigned the function of superintending the Nairobi River riparian evacuation order. In addition, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has on several occasions throughout the last two years made public statements contradicting the president on critical matters of governance and the exercise of the president's functions as a symbol of national unity. To illustrate, in March 2023, at a public forum in the Nyanza region, the president said Kenya belongs to all, notwithstanding how people voted in the 2022 general elections, and that he would ensure the government does not discriminate against anyone. However, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, speaking after the president at another public forum, contradicted him by saying that Kenya is a company in which the provision of government services is based on shares. B, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has made numerous other utterances at public forums where he publicly restates the divisive narrative that Kenya is a company in which the rights of citizens are based on shares determined, determined by how various ethnic communities voted in the 2022 general elections. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's unilateral divisive and insightful public statements are impeachable offenses to the extent that a they undermine the effective discharge of the national government's executive mandate b they violate the doctrine of collective responsibility c they are equivalent to insubordination of the president which is incompatible with his constitutional status as a principal assistant to the president of the republic of kenya your Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground two, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground three, gross violation of Articles 6, 2, 10, 2, A, 174, 186, 1, 189, 1, and the fourth schedule to the Constitution, that is, undermining devolution. Article 10, 2, A of the Constitution provides that devolution is a fundamental national value and principle of governance. In addition, Article 6.2 of the Constitution provides that governments at the county and national levels are distinct and interdependent and shall conduct their mutual relations based on consultation and cooperation. These provisions are supplemented by Article 189.1 of the Constitution, which provides that governments at each level shall perform and exercise their, function, their powers in a manner that respects the functional and institutional integrity of government at the other level. Under paragraph 7A of part 2 of the fourth schedule to the Constitution, county governments are responsible for trade development and markets as an exclusive function. Moreover, the Deputy President chairs the Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council, an essential organ for consultation between the two levels of government. On or around 20th September 2024, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, recklessly unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President of the Republic, 
unlawfully interfered with the running of Nairobi City County Government by holding a public rally in which he incited citizens against lawful directives of the Nairobi City County Government on the planning and relocation of markets. Further, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa publicly disparaged the leadership of the Nairobi City County Government and its decisions. Moreover, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has interfered with the proper discharge of county government's constitutional functions regarding alcohol control and regulation. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's insightful and demeaning public statements and conduct are impeachable offenses to the extent that A, they undermine devolution, B, they undercut the functional and institutional integrity of county governments, C, they unjustifiably vilify and ridicule the leadership of county governments, especially the Nairobi City County Government. Consequently, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has grossly violated Article 6 to Clark, Ten just a minute. I realize uh, what you're reading is fairly long. His Excellency, the Deputy President, if you may will, you may sit, and when taking the plea, you may stand. No, Mr. Speaker, let me stand. You may proceed, Clerk. I repeat. Consequently, His Excellency, the Gadi Gashagwa, has grossly violated Articles 6 to 10 to A, 174, 186, 1, and 189, 1 of the Constitution, as read with the fourth schedule to the Constitution. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground three? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground four, gross violation of Article 161 of the Constitution, that is undermining the institutional and decisional independence of judges. Article 161 of the Constitution provides that the judiciary shall be subject only to this Constitution and the law and shall not be subject to the control or direction of any person or authority. Many international law instruments, treaties, and principles require the guarantee of the judiciary's independence and require all government officers and institutions to respect and observe it. In 2023, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa recklessly unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, and the need to respect, protect, and uphold the independence of the judiciary, made a scathing public attack against the Honorable Lady Justice Esther Minor, judge of the High Court of Kenya, and falsely threatened to file a petition for the removal of the said judge in gross violation of Article 165 of the Constitution. The Honorable Judge had presided over a case in which His Excellency Rigadi Gashago was a party and had, in the lawful performance of her judicial function, ordered His Excellency Rigadi Gashago to forfeit to the state the sum of Kenya shillings 200 million, which she had found to be proceeds of corruption and money laundering. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's public attacks against the judge are impeachable offenses to the extent that they undermine the functional and decisional independence of judges. Your Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground four, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground five, gross violation of articles 3, 1, and 148, 5A of the Constitution, that is breach of the oath of office and Allegiance. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa's actions and utterances outlined in Grounds 1, 2, 3, and 4 constitute a gross violation of Article 3, 1 of the Constitution, which requires every person to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution. Further, the actions and utterances of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa grossly violate Article 148, 5A of the Constitution which prescribes the oath of allegiance of the office of the deputy president that obligates the deputy president to obey, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and all other laws. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground five, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Part B, 
serious reasons to believe that the Deputy President has committed a crime under national law pursuant to Article 151B2 of the Constitution. Ground 6. Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has committed crimes under Sections 13, 1A and 62 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act. Section 13 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act provides that it is an offense for any person to use threatening, abusive or insulting words or behavior where the person intends to stir up feelings of ethnic contempt, hatred, hostility, violence or discrimination. The section also makes it an offense to use such words or engage in such behavior when having regard to all the circumstances, ethnic hatred is likely to be stirred up. Besides, Section 62 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act states that a person commits an offense when the person makes statements that are intended or are likely to stir up feelings of ethnic contempt, hatred, hostility, violence, or discrimination. His Excellency, the Gadi Gashagwa's persistent, inflammatory, reckless, insightful public utterances over the last two years, the details of which are set out in Grounds 1, two, three, and four, establish serious reasons to believe that he has committed crimes under Section 13.1 and 62 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act. Your Excellency, the Gavi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground six, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground seven, serious reasons to believe that His Excellency, the Gavi Gashagwa, has committed crimes under sections 45, 1, 46, 47A, 3, and 48, 1 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, and sections 2, 3, 4, and 7 of the Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Act. For the past two years, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has inexplic inexplicably amassed a humongous portfolio, uh, property portfolio estimated at Kenya shillings 5.2 billion, primarily from proceeds of corruption and money laundering. The value of the property and wealth that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has acquired over the last two years is incompatible with his known legitimate income, that is Kenya shillings 12 million per annum or thereabouts. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has acquired the above-mentioned property and wealth using his two sons, Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa, uh, that is Kevin Gashagwa, and Keith Ikinu Rigadi, that is Keith Ikinu, and other close family members and associates as proxies. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa and his proxies, especially the two sons, have used the following companies to massively launder money, conceal proceeds of crime, corruption, and benefit from influence peddling. Number one, Spiritway Limited, PVT-Y2ULDMKY, date of incorporation 14th of September 2023, shareholders, Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, who is director, stroke shareholder, stroke beneficial owner with 100 shares. Two, Fortis Viz Group Limited, PVT-MKUMAKEE, -E, date of incorporation 14th of February 2023. Shareholders, Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa with 50 shares and Keith Ikinu Rigadi, 50 shares. Three, Grand Bypass Apartments Limited, PVT-5JUZEKL8, date of incorporation 11th of January 2024, shareholders Rigadi Gashagwa, director, John Mwai Madenge of 7676931 as director, Peter Njoroge Regeru, uh, number 4686103, director. Vipingo Beach Resort Limited, number C, 
159289 shareholder with one share. Four, Kuruwitu Properties Limited, PVT EYUBKG83, date of incorporation 26th of April 2023. Shareholders Vipingo Beach Resort Limited, number C159289, as shareholder with 1,000 shares, and John Mwai Madenge. Number five, the Anansi Collective. BN-JRCG 76AG, date of incorporation 29th of March 2021, shareholders Keith ninth of March 2021, shareholders Keith Ikinu Regan 7, Calvary Creed International Limited, number CPR stroke 2015 stroke 186-154, date of incorporation 16th of April 2015, shareholders Rigadi Gashagwa with 50 shares, Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi 950 shares. 8, Cosmia Venture Limited, number PVT dash Q7ULE6Z, date of incorporation 26th of February 2018. Shareholders, Herman Zoita Maina, 200 shares. James Mwangi Kagodo, 50 shares. Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa, 250 shares. Keith Ikinu Rigadi, 50 shares. Irene Nyanjao Washira, 250 shares and David Kipkemboy Mudamia, 200 shares. Number nine, Crystal Kenya Limited, number CPR stroke 2009 stroke 4898, date of incorporation 12th of June 2009, shareholders Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa, 200 shares, Keith Ikinu Rigadi, 200 shares. 10, Delta Merchants Limited, number CPR stroke 2009 stroke 4874, Date of incorporation, 9th of June 2009. Shareholders, Rigadi Gashagwa, 200 shares. Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, 200 shares. 11, Vipingo Beach Resort Limited, number C159289. Date of incorporation, 5th of August 2008. Shareholders, Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa, as director. Keith Ikino Rigadi, director. Estate of the deceased, James Nderito Gashagwa, shareholder with 10,000 shares. 12, Rigadi Gashagwa Foundation, number CLG-XXFXRG, date of incorporation 11th of November 2022, shareholders Rigadi Gashagwa. 13, Dorcas Rigadi Foundation, number CLG-G9FV2G, date of incorporation 19th of October 2022, shareholders Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa, Keith Ikino Rigadi, Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, Nancy Wamboi Kangede. 14, Heartland Supplies Limited, number CPR stroke 2009 stroke 4881, Date of incorporation, 11th of June, 2009. Shareholders, Rigadi Gashagwa, director, as director, stock shareholder with 200 shares. Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, as director and shareholder with 200 shares. 15, Karandi Farm Limited, number C94303. Date of incorporation, 25th of June, 2001. Shareholders, Rigadi Gashagwa, as director, shareholder with 700 shares. Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, as director and shareholder with 100 shares. 16, Morani Manufacturers Limited, number PVT-8LU7Q8GD, date of incorporation 13th of October 2021. Shareholders, Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, as director and shareholder, 200 shares. 
Keith Ikinu Rigadi, Director and Shareholder, 200 shares. Joshua Karianjahi Waiganjo, Director, Shareholder, 600 shares. And Grace Washuka Mwangi, Beneficial Owner. 17, Mothers of the Land Limited, number CLG, dash 55 FD 3B, date of incorporation 1st of December 2021. Shareholders, Louisa Njeri Wanjiro, Director, Stroke Member. Caroline Jepkemboy Waiyaki, Director, Stroke Member. Lucy Njogoine Motegi, Director, Stroke Member. Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, Director, Stroke Member. 18, Pioneer Medical Kenya Limited, Number CPR stroke 2009 stroke 4910, date of incorporation 9th of June 2009. Shareholders Rigadi Gashagwa as director, stroke shareholder 200 shares. Dorcas Wajiko Rigadi, director and shareholder 200 shares. 19, Rider Furniture Mart Limited, number C. 141876, date of incorporation 8th, 18th of July 2007. Shareholders, Rigadi Gashagwa, as director and shareholder, 500 shares. Dorcas Wanjiko Rigadi, as director and shareholder, 500 shares. 20, Royal Crimson Ventures Limited, number PVT LRU2QZL. Date of incorporation, 26th of February 2018. Shareholders, Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa as director and shareholder with 400 shares. Keith Ikino Rigadi as director and shareholder, 400 shares. And Peter Kangagi Gidaiga as, as director and shareholder, 200 shares. 21, Technical Supplies and Services Limited, Kenya Limited. Date of incorporation, 6th of June, 2009. Shareholders, Rigadi Gashagwa, as director, stock shareholder with 400 shares. Sorry, i said that again. 21, Technical Supplies and Services, Kenya Limited. CPR, uh, 2009, stroke 48.95. Uh, date of incorporation is 6th of June 2009. Shareholders are Rigadi Gashagwa, director, stock shareholder with 400 shares, and Francis Moshiri Wanguo, director. And 22, Wamunyoro Investments Limited, C, number C, 93670. Date of incorporation, 23rd of April, 2001. Shareholders, Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa, as director, stock shareholder with one share, and Keith Ikinu Rigadi, director, stock shareholder with one share. To illustrate, in November 2023, Crystal Kenya Limited, number nine in the above table, a proxy company of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, purchased Outspan Hotel, situated at Nyeri Municipality Block Stroke 1, Stroke 1669, from Abadea Safari Hotels, for Kenya shillings, 535 million. The directors of Crystal Kenya Limited are the sons of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, namely Kevin Gashagwa and Keith Ikinu. Sometime in August 2024, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa publicly admitted that his family had acquired this property. B, in November 2023, Kevin Gashagwa and Keith Ikinu, the proxies of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, acquired Treetops Lodge, a high-end hotel situated in Nyeri County. Sometime in August 2024, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa publicly admitted that his family had acquired this property. C, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa and his proxies also acquired Olive Gardens Hotel, 
and Queen's Gate Service Departments in Nairobi. D, His Excellency the Gadiga Shagwa acquired Vipingo Beach Resort in Kilifi County. E, His Excellency the Gadiga Shagwa acquired a parcel of land known as Rogoro Kiamari, Rogoro Stroke Kiamariga Stroke 1223 in Madera East constituency where he constructed a helicopter landing facility. F, His Excellency the Gadiga Shagwa acquired approximately 40 acres of land in Kakuret in Kamburaine in Nyeri County. G, His Excellency the Gadiga Shagwa acquired 80 acres of land in Meru County. H, His Excellency the Gadiga Shagwa acquired a dairy farm in Nyandarwa County. I, additionally, His Excellency the Gadiga Shagwa used his office of Deputy President to exert influence and connive with unscrupulous Ministry of Lands officials to issue an, allot an allotment letter to Amunyoro Investments Limited, a company that he owns, to acquire LR209-12077 and LR90923 situated at Embakasi in Nairobi, whose value is estimated at Kenya shillings 1.5 billion or thereabouts. After that, this company used the fraudulently acquired documents to support a court case at the expense of the legitimate owner of the property. J. Moreover, companies associated with His Excellency the Gadi Gashagwa and his proxies were involved in the Kemsa Kenya shillings 3.7 billion irregular procurement of malaria nets that put the lives of millions of Kenyans at risk. K. In addition, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has used the office of Deputy President to corruptly influence unnecessary and expensive renovation of his official residence in Karen and Mombasa, running into millions of shillings. In essence, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has chosen personal comfort, extreme luxury, and pomposity, and pomposity at the expense of service delivery to the people of Kenya. L, images of some of the properties that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has acquired from proceeds of corruption, influence peddling, and money laundering have been provided and relate to the following. One, Tree Tops Hotel, located in Nyeri. In Nyeri. Two, Outspan Hotel, located in Abadea Ranges. Three, Olive Gardens Hotel, Agwings Kodek Road, and four, Vipingo Beach Resort. Additionally, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has the following proxy companies to trade with the office he holds. A, Agrobrick Investments Limited. It is a private limited company incorporated in Kenya on 28th May 2017 and a certificate number PVT-RXUP6E. The company deals in building and construction. The company's directors stock shareholders are A. Rudani Mayur Kumar Mahendrabai and B. Patel Ankit Kumar Hasmukbai, a Kenya, an Ankenyan national. 48. The company operates a bank account number withheld for data protection reasons at Cedian Bank opened on 19th February 2022 with the company directors as the account signatories. On 18th October 2022, Bavika Nathalal Hirani was added as an account signatory and given the full mandate to operate the account. Bavika Nathalal Hirani is a proxy of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa. On 23rd January 2023, the company account received a transfer of Kenya shillings 47 million, 15,367 shillings and 75 cents from the executive office of the deputy president. The payment was supported by A, notification of award letter reference number ODP stroke ADM uh, dot uh, ADM dot one stroke 
VO dot, dot four bracket seventy dated sixteenth December twenty twenty two from the office of the Deputy President to Agrobrick Investment Limited for the proposed refurbishment of Deputy President's official residence at Karen at a cost of Kenya shillings fifty five million five hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred and twenty. B payment voucher of Kenya shillings fifty five million one hundred and thirty three thousand two hundred and sixty five and ninety two cents was received on tenth january twenty twenty three as the first interim payment in respect of the contract ODP dash RT dash zero zero one sorry ODP stroke RT stroke zero zero one stroke two thousand twenty two Dash 2023. See an agreement letter dated 22nd December 2022 between Office of Deputy President and Agrobrick Investment Limited for the proposed renovation of Deputy President's official residence in Karen. Bavika Nathalal Hirani signed the document as a director of Agrobrick Investment Limited. On 23rd January 2023, the funds were suspiciously transferred through a transfer of Kenya shillings 45 million to a related entity, that is, Vagjiani Enterprises Limited. Shockingly, the account had been dormant for around nine months before it received the payment from the office of the Deputy President, adding to the reasonable suspicion that it was a special purpose vehicle to siphon funds for His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa. B. Lusona Events Limited. This is an events management company that was registered on 30th of October 2012 under certificate number CPR stroke 2012 stroke 87037. The company directors are A. Esther Wanjiro Njenga and B. Cecilia Mudoni Njenga. The company operates two accounts at the SBM Bank, which it opened in 2015. The company's directors are account signatories. Ian Jugona Gitata was also introduced as an account signatory and is the sole account operator, pointing to the likelihood that he is the beneficial owner. Between 1st January 2024 and 11th July 2024, the account at SBM Bank received a total of 100 million shillings, 262,821 and 43 cents from the office of the Deputy President, characterized by the receipt of multiple transfers. On 2nd of July 2024, the Deputy President's office paid Lusona Events Limited part of the above mentioned proceeds of corruption and money laundering in eight transactions in a single day as follows. On 2nd of July, first on 2nd of July, 2024, the amount of 2,946,900. Secondly, on 2nd of July, 2024, the amount of 4,806,639 shillings. Thirdly, on 2nd of July, 2024, the amount of 4,679,000. 130 shillings. Fourthly, on 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 2,955,450 shillings. Fifth, on 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 3,374,400 shillings. Sixthly, on 2nd of July uh, 2024, the amount of 5,451,912 shillings and 40 cents. Number seven, on 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 3,582,536 shillings and 50 cents. And number eight, on 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 3,840,000 six hundred and twenty five shillings and sixty cents. A substantial portion of the Kenya shillings one hundred million two hundred and sixty 
2,821.43 was used for luxurious largesse and unnecessary expenditure for carpets, etc., laid down for the Deputy President's functions. Some of the funds were utilized as follows. A. Ian Gitata made Kenya shillings 22,800,000 in cash withdrawals, withdrawals. Some of the withdrawals were declared as cash to pay undisclosed beneficiaries. It was suspicious why they preferred cash payments as opposed to bank transfers. B. Kenya shillings 4 million transferred to a law firm. C. Kenya shillings 26,993,350. Investment in fixed term deposits as follows. One, on 27th of May 2024, Kenya shillings 9,993,350. Two, on 11th July 2024, Kenya shillings 17 million. The utilization of funds was reasonably believed to be an act of corruption and money laundering, as most of the money was withdrawn in cash rather than bank transfers, which is a custom for huge payments. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa is reasonably suspected to be the principal beneficiary of these dubious transactions. C. St. Nicholas Rehabilitation and Industrial Training Institute Limited. The company was incorporated on 8th of April 2021 under registration number PVT AAA CMO4. It deals with student rehabilitation and industrial training, trading as St. Nicholas Rehabilitation Center and Psychiatric Hospital. The sole company director is Nicholas Mugambi Maingi. The company operates an account at Equity Bank opened on 18th August 2017 with the company director as the sole account signatory. Between 1st March 2024 and 5th June 2024, the account received a total of Kenya shillings 21,060,000 from, from, from the office of the Deputy President. The funds were suspiciously utilized as follows. A. Kenya shillings 2 million was, was allegedly used to purchase a white Toyota Prado from Umarali Motors Limited for Kenya shillings 8.5 million. B, another Kenya shillings 4 million was suspiciously transferred to Nicholas Maingi's account. A cash trail in the personal account revealed that upon receipt of the funds, Nicholas made a transfer of Kenya shillings 4,660,000 to Umarali Motors Limited on 21st March 2024. The purported payment to Umarali Motors Limited using two routes raises reasonable suspicion of corruption and money laundering. Further, prior to receipt of the two payments from the office of the Deputy President, the account was transacting in minimal accounts raising suspicions that the entire transaction was a conduit used by His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa to siphon public funds. The payment scheme used typifies money laundering transactions. From the matters outlined in the preceding, para, uh, in the preceding parts, it is patently clear that there are serious reasons to believe that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, using his state office, has committed gross economic crimes, namely conflict of interest, abuse of office, conspiracy to commit crimes under A, sections 45.1A, 46, 47A3, and 48.1 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, and B, sections 2, 3, 4, and 7 of the Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Act. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to count seven, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Round <coughs> eight, serious reasons to believe that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has committed crimes under Section 132 of the Penal Code and Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has continuously misled members of the public 
through false, malicious, divisive, and insightful remarks that are contrary to the provisions of Section 132 of the Penal Code and Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. To illustrate, sometime, a, in, sometime in January 2024, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made a sensational but false accusation that Honorable Justice Esther Minor, Judge of the High Court of Kenya, had engaged in corruption. He publicly said he would present a petition for the removal of the said judge, which, has not, which he has not done to date, leading to the inevitable conclusion that he knew his allegations were false. On or about 26th of June 2024, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa recklessly and unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the Office of the Deputy President of the Republic and his membership to the National Security Council, both being positions that require one to be a discreet and tempered leader, especially during moments of national crisis, addressed Kenyans on live television in Mombasa County and publicly made sensational statements against the National Intelligence Service, an essential national security organ, its director and officers. The following is an excerpt of part of his speech. I quote, the Director General of the National Intelligence Service, Nurdin Haji, was a junior officer in the National Intelligence Service before he was appointed as DPP. When he was appointed to the office of the Director General, because of his inferiority complex, he chased away all the people who were senior to him when he was in the service, therefore crippling the capacity of that service and making it dysfunctional. Three directors were chased away and reassigned to desk jobs in ministries across government. Thirteen assistant directors, men and women with proven track record of intelligence collection and analysis, were removed from the National Intelligence Service, leaving a shell and a clueless director general who has no capacity to run the organization. And that is why the security sector was caught off guard by the intensity, the anger of the Kenyan people, the agitation of the Kenyan people, the resilience of the Kenyan people. End of quote. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashago, how do you plead to ground eight, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. But C, gross misconduct, pursuant to Article 151B3 of the Constitution. Ground 9, gross misconduct, that is public attacks on National Security Intelligence Service and its officers. The phrase gross misconduct generally refers to behavior that is, quote, very unpleasant, disgusting, or very rude. This is from the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. Therefore, public attacks against an essential national security organ in circumstances that require one to be discreet and tempered constitute gross misconduct. On or around 26th of June 2024, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the Office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya and his membership to the National Security Council, both being positions that require a leader to be discreet and tempered, especially during moments of national crisis, addressed Kenyans on live television in Mombasa County and made a scathing attack on the National Intelligence Service, an essential national security organ. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa extended the extremely reckless personal attacks to the Director General of the institution. With the unprecedented acts, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa acted in a manner that is incompatible with the high calling and dignified status of the Office of the Deputy President and Member of the Cabinet and the National Security Council. The attacks against the National Intelligence Service and its Director General constitute gross misconduct and an impeachable offense to the extent that, A, they are incompatible with the high calling and dignified status of the Office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. B, they undermine national security from both internal and external points of view. C, 
they are incompatible with the effective discharge of the delicate and sensitive mandate of the National Intelligence Service. D, they had the potential, given the circumstances prevailing in the country at the time, to significantly diminish public confidence in, their, in the viability of the Kenyan state and its ability to protect the lives and properties of its citizens. E, they go against the constitutionally prescribed oath of allegiance of the office of the Deputy President under Article 148, 5A of the Constitution, which requires the Deputy President to obey, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and all other laws. Your Excellency, regarding Ashagwa, how do you plead to Ground 9, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground 10, gross misconduct, that is insubordination. As stated in Ground 9, the phrase gross misconduct generally refers to behavior that is very unpleasant, disgusting, very rude. This is from the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. Therefore, open or public insubordination of the president, who is the head of state and government under our constitutional framework, is gross misconduct. As stated in the preceding parts, Article 147.1 of the Constitution designates the deputy president as the principal assistant of the president who shall deputize for the president in the execution of the president's functions. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has persistently undermined, demeaned, and committed insubordination instead of assisting the president in executing the state executive mandate. Instead, he has opted to run a smear campaign against the presidency for political expediency. Further, whereas Article 147.2 of the Constitution requires the Deputy President to perform the functions conferred by the Constitution and any other functions that the President may assign, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa is openly sabotaging the state's efforts in agriculture, including the coffee, tea, sugar, and milk sectors, which the President tasked him to oversee. To illustrate, A, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has connived with cartels in the tea sector to block the Kenya Tea Development Agency from implementing guaranteed minimum returns that would benefit smallholder tea farmers. B, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has influenced his family members, allies, associates, and proxies, and proxies to take control of a local cooperative society name withheld in Madeira, which they are financially hemorrhaging. Your Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground 10, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground 11, gross misconduct, that is bullying. As stated in ground 9, the phrase gross misconduct generally refers to behavior that is very unpleasant, disgusting, or very rude. This is from the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. Section 34 of the Leadership and Integrity Act provides that a state officer shall not bully any person. Bullying includes repeated offensive behavior that is vindictive, cruel, malicious, or humiliating, and is intended to undermine a person. For the past two years, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has persistently bullied state and public officers. To illustrate, A, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa bullied Kenya Medical Supplies Agency officials into awarding a tender for the supply of mosquito nets to Crystal Limited, his proxy company. Crystal Limited has submitted a fake bid bond with the sole intention of fraudulently acquiring public property. B, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa routinely bullies public officers in national security organs whom he subjects to public attacks and humiliation. C, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa routinely summons procurement officers in ministries and state institutions and instructs them to, di to direct the procurement of goods and services in a particular manner. D, in the presidency, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa identified public officers who he thinks stand in his way of creating dominance within government 
and political kingship, and he has severely threatened, intimidated, and harassed them. He, in 2023, His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa used his position as a deputy president to intimidate public officers and a contractor to divert materials meant for the construction of the Kilifi Malindi Road to, to tarmac a private road to Vipingo Beach Resort, a hotel associated with him. F, His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa uses his constitutional power as deputy president solely to implement sectarian, parochial, and personal interests that seek to profit him. Your Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground 11? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Is Your Excellency the Deputy?